<laughs> Make your hands clap. There we go. The good thing is she's fine. She's fine. Okay. She's fine. We'll have more of that coming up later. Good morning to you. I'm Stella Scabito. Well, um, interesting outside. Yeah, the mm -hmm. rain is coming down and it's pretty good amounts right now, uh, especially for those of you waking up in North County. Whoa, we look at that. I mean, it's been a while, right? So we can get excited. For we this. can get excited for some rain and Evan is tracking more of that rain. Uh, will we see more of that rain today? Yeah, it looks like we've got a good chance for it. This, thank you, Carla, by the way, for filming this. Our producer outside of nice. the building, we're seeing that drizzle come down. Hey, in some spots of the county, it's coming down heavy to <laughs> a local uh, aerial flood advisory in effect from Oceanside down through San Diego. We'll take a look at that in a second. I want to first give you a look at the radar image. You can see we are not used to this much wet weather uh, to start off a morning. We have been relatively dry over the last several months, so this is a welcome sight in many cases because we need the wet weather, but keep in mind it is causing some delays on the road. So we do have radar showing wet weather out there. We've got this in terms of the flood advisory that we have from Oceanside down through San Diego. Again, localized heavy amounts of rain. Flash flood watch is what we're also keeping an eye on for the eastern half of the county that expires at 8 p.m. Now let's take a look at your forecast. High temperatures going to stay a little bit cooler because of the extensive cloud cover that we've got for today. Switching gears, taking a look at your traffic. We have a couple things to mention because of the wet weather out there. First things first on the right hand shoulder that is blocked right now as you uh, look off toward about the Vista area just uh, farther to the west of Vista and then also on the 15 at the old Highway 395 exit. Want to take you down south. There are two lanes that are blocked due to a jack jackknife semi. Uh, so far, last time I checked about 10 minutes ago, they were still unable to remove that jackknife semi, so it is causing some orange and yellow there, indicating extensive delays. Local bypass, there's an exit on the Carmel Mountain Road exit. That's exit 32 just farther south of Del Mar. Taking you all the way down south, the 15 left-hand shoulder blocked, but we aren't seeing any uh, traffic backups or delays on the 15. This is closer to the South Park area, so smooth sailing closer to uh, South Bay right now and across the downtown area. We'll let you know if anything pops up as this rain just keeps coming down. More updates to one when we see that rain coming to a halt. Back to you. Evan, thank you. This morning, San Diegans are keeping a close eye on a rise in COVID cases nationwide. Local leaders are calling it the pandemic of the unvaccinated. And today, a committee will review its response, what the county is going to do about this. News 8's Allison Royal joining us live with a closer look. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Netta and Stella. This is definitely a question on many people's minds. And according to San Diego County Public Health data, there has been an uptick in COVID-19 cases in our county. So many Californians are wondering what's next. You don't know what to what to do. Not wear it, wear it, you know. So according to county public health data, more than every one out of 10 people testing positive for COVID-19 over the past month are fully vaccinated. Sometimes doctors call these breakthrough cases. According to a release, the county's COVID-19 Response and Recovery Committee, or the city's rather, is meeting today and hopes to hit on four key areas. Number one, Health and Human Services will give an update on the Delta variant in the city. Number two, there will be plans on how COVID-19 could impact this upcoming school year. Number three, there will be some information on California's push for equity when it comes to COVID-19 resources across the state. Number four, they will discuss spaces as places. Now, this might ring a bell to give you an idea. That's the city of San Diego's program where some of those more temporary dining structures, well, they want to make them a little bit more permanent if possible. So we're talking about some of those sidewalk tables or maybe going out to eat and sitting in a parking lot underneath a tent. So I'm going to bring you back out here live. So the city's COVID-19 Response and Recovery Committee is going to meet a little on later today. That's going to be at 9 o'clock. And if you're interested, you can always call in. I'm going to send it back to you, too. Allison, thank you. Well, as the COVID-19 Delta variant continues to spread, the CDC is considering a change in its guidance on masks, even if you're fully vaccinated. That is according to Dr. Anthony Fauci. In a televised interview, Dr. Fauci said recommendations for vaccinated individuals to wear masks is, quote, under active consideration. He also says a booster shot may soon be recommended for the immunocompromised. Well, this morning, jury selection is set to begin in the trial of the man accused of killing San Diego police officer Jonathan J.D. de Guzman. This was five years ago this week when it happened July 28th of 2016. That's when Officer de Guzman was on patrol in South Crest when he pulled up to talk to two men. Police say one of the men, Jesse Michael Gomez, shot Officer de Guzman several times while he sat in his patrol car. De Guzman's partner was also hurt. He returned fire, wounding Gomez. Now, if found guilty, Gomez faces the death penalty or life in prison without parole.
And this morning, we're still awaiting the release of court records in the gun violence restraining order case against the husband of missing mother, Maya Miliete. The Chula Vista Police Department officially named Larry Miliete a person of interest. And News 8 obtained evidence photos, you see them here, showing Larry Miliete's gun collection spread out there on a kitchen table. This photo, in fact, includes his four-year-old son standing on the table surrounded by firearms, but a judge did order that child's image to be hidden from that photo. Meanwhile, dozens of people rallied downtown in support of Maya over the weekend. Although it's been more than six months since she disappeared, her family not giving up hope. So it's one of our efforts to continue to spread the word and hopefully we can get more volunteers and come and help us uh, search. So, you know, this is one of, you know, our efforts again to keep on going, to keep the traction going and to keep her, her name in the spotlights. Now they want you to remember her and keep looking for her. As you just heard, her family looking for more volunteers to help with their weekly searches that have been taking place all across San Diego County. Well, some tense moments between demonstrators and counter protesters outside a pro-Israel rally in El Cajon. The rally included several speakers, including former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and was organized by a group called Shield of David, denouncing the rise in anti-Semitism. It drew protesters from a pro-Palestinian group, some of whom engaged with counter-protesters outside a security perimeter at Prescott Promenade. There were reports of fights and pepper spray being used, but the groups apparently dispersed before police even got involved. There were no reports of any arrests. Today marks a new push to address, to address bike safety in light of the recent death of a bicyclist. The San Diego County Bicycle Coalition is leading the charge. This comes nearly a week after the death of Laura Shin, an architect and planner who worked at San Diego State University. The County Bicycle Coalition is calling on Mayor Todd Gloria, the City Council, and SANDAG to take action. The group plans to hold a rally at 11 a.m. at Bird Park in North Park. This morning, three more local school districts begin their first day of school. They're all in the South Bay. It includes National School District, San Ysidro School District, and South Bay Union School District. And heads up before heading to the beach in the South Bay. Yeah, you won't want to do that during uh, rain anyway, but part of the Imperial Beach shoreline is closed again. After being open for just one week, county health officials issued a water contact closure because of runoff. A lot of this comes from the Tijuana River, the slough there, also from a wastewater treatment plant south of the border. This impacts beaches from the international border to the south end of Seacoast Drive, so that's just south of the pier. The closure will be in place until testing shows that the water is safe to enter again but as we know three days after rainfall don't go in the water so wait until the end of this week and taking a look outside look at this where where's this evan it looks this is pb yeah this is wow. the crystal pier there it looks the, calm it, yes it, exactly and that's the thing is over the course of the day today it's going to be really what we can expect day wide just the whole day is going to be that extensive cloud cover cooler temperatures but at times we'll see those isolated showers come through you can see on our satellite radar imagery down toward san diego itself we're actually pretty dry right now However, moving up through Del Mar and then especially up toward Oceanside, we're seeing the more moderate and heavy downpours of rain. Those are the areas of yellow and even some orange on the screen that you see just across the valley center area from a few hours ago. So watch out even when you see those calm skies like in PB right now and it's just cloudy out there. You could at times encounter one of those quick moving downpours of rain, something to watch out for. In San Diego itself, we're expecting lighter possibilities of showers, 10, 20, 30 percent. Looks like we will still at times see the sun peak out too, so it will be drier closer to the coastline uh, today. 77 is what we're going for by the afternoon. Less of an opportunity for precipitation by the afternoon. Looks like the eastern half of the county is where we could see some thunderstorms pop up around that time frame, though. Let's take a look outside. You can see how the view shows extensive cloud cover at times. Virga, meaning that it's not actually hitting the ground, just light accumulations. And then going into the rest of the week, your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we actually encounter much drier conditions on hand. So we've got drier and warmer weather starting Tuesday and beyond really, but cooler, cloudier and humid today. Isolated showers and a chance of some thunderstorms. Let's switch gears. Take a look at what's going on on the roads right now. Because of the wet weather out there, we are seeing a bit of trouble, especially on the five. That's where we've seen some backups. So right now we've got the right hand shoulder blocked. This is after an accident on the I-5 southbound at Aliso Creek rest area and then uh, off toward the 15. We've also been encountering a little bit of a delay on the 15. This is going southbound at exit 43. Want to take you down south. We've been talking about this jackknife semi. 
Earlier reports said that they weren't able to clear it. However, it looks like traffic has lightened up quite a bit, so they may have been able to move it off uh, to the shoulder. There's also a crash that we're encountering on the, the bypass. This is northbound at exit 32, the Carmel Mountain Road exit. We've been watching out for the 15 left hand shoulder blocked uh, on the 15 southbound moving on to the 94, but it hasn't seemed to cause any delays in the area quite yet. Volume still a little bit light. We'll let you know if things change around there, but for now, just make sure you're light, lessening your speed just a little bit. If you're encountering areas where you're under that flood advisory, where there's localized heavy downpour, you want to uh, tap the brakes a little bit more. Back over to you. Yeah, it's slick on the roads. I know we're not used to that here, so be safe, everybody. Uh, let's turn now to the Padres. They're making some big moves ahead of the trading deadline on Friday. Yeah, they are They are acquiring all-star second baseman and outfielder Adam Frazier from the Pittsburgh Pirates. In return, the Friars would give up three minor league players. Frazier leads all of baseball in hits. The 29-year-old would be under contract through the end of next year.